Well, I thought that I would do another one of these. Um, I wasn't really planning this, but I, I, I thought today that... Well, I have a bunch of stuff to show and I, I'll just give this another another try. Because I have been showing Swedish stuff before. If you didn't get get it by the title this video, in this video, I'm going to show you a bunch of... Basically like a normal DVD update, but I'm going to show you only Swedish stuff. So, if you're not interested in that, which is fully <laughs> understandable, then uh, just, just know that it's going to be Swedish stuff that I've been watching uh, recently and semi-recently, I guess. But I used to... Well, I've been sort of jump, jumping back and forth, or I mean, switching between different ways of showing the Swedish stuff. Uh, now I've been showing some stuff that has English subtitles, and uh, because it makes doesn't make sense in a way, it doesn't make sense to show you stuff that doesn't have any Swedish any English subtitles, um, because people outside of Sweden or at least Scandinavia wouldn't be able to understand. But yeah, I made a couple of these videos in the past where I talk about Swedish stuff. And uh, I, I think I tried what, making a third one, but it didn't really work out that well. <laughs> uh, or maybe, or it might have been the second one actually, which didn't work out. But I uploaded it and uploaded it anyway. I'm not, I'm not sure. Anyway, I uh, got a b bunch of stuff, stuff to talk about, so we'll just see which ones I'll pick in this video. I'll just pick a bunch of random stuff. Anyway, this one I actually finished just now, uh, and it's a show called Stup, which translates to Stand Up, and it's with this guy Thomas Järveden. He is a Swedish stand-up comedian, probably one, probably one of the most well-known. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of them. If, if you compare to America, obviously it's a big difference in population, so it makes sense. But it's a very big difference in uh, when you speak of famous comedians and famous stand-up comedians. But this guy is, has been pretty famous for a while now. This one is from a production year 2007. Like you can see here, uh, play time 210 minutes, so three and a half hours. Um, I bought this along with another DVD of him, uh, which is a regular stand-up DVD, uh, which I haven't seen yet. But and that that it's been a while since I bought bought them too. But this one, I I always kind of wonder what exactly it was, or always, but since I bought it at least, um, because <laughs> it it was so cheap, and I just picked it up, and I never really know knew exactly where it was. But because it was so long, I was like, it can't be a regular stand-up show, so. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure what exactly it was, so I just randomly, ra randomly one day decided to pop it in in the DVD player and see what it was. And what it is, it's actually an eight-episode TV show where he and th the title made sense to me after after that uh, wh when I found out what it is. Uh, he uh, he does some stand-up stand-up comedy in between, but mainly it he uh, it's he. Um, um, it's it's before uh, you can see he, this is the stage and the audience is is watching him, and uh, he sort of says that in every episode the audience they're the um, the victims or they're it's it's about the audience because basically uh, friends and family of the audience they've been telling him or the you know the the pro the show the product the producers or whatever stories about. The, whom the people they're going to to see the show with, so Thomas Järvhed and he knows these stories. He has rehearsed them, and he's telling funny stories. And uh, throughout this, these stories, one in the audience will sort of be like, "Well, hey, that's me." He's talking about, and that's the thing. It sort of works out l like a stand-up show, but the stories are true. And at, at some point of the show, this arrow will start to blink and then it's time for the person in the audience who is recognizing the story to be his own or her own to stand up and then you know there's a spotlight on that person and there's applause by the rest of the people and they're laughing and he's asking them questions like how did you get in this situation and then then it's the next story and then they also receive a gift from him or from the whatever from the program and uh, <laughs> which is somehow relate, related to their story not very nice gifts, but uh, it's they're always uh, original. I mean, they're always uh, different. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I <laughs> I enjoyed this more than I thought I would when I when I first uh, watched it, the first episode. Pretty early on, I was like, eight episodes of this. It seems like a pretty thin concept to pull out, to make eight episodes out of, but it definitely worked. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And it's on two discs, so I really enjoyed it. So yeah. Let's see what can I show then. I'll 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 go with something that I've also watched yesterday. 
Uh, this is a movie called Svindlande Affärer. I don't know how to translate that, but um, it's um, part of the Swedish classics series. And uh, I don't know what they mean by classics. Um, it, it basically comedies which I, I guess a lot of people have been watching and they don't necessarily need to be good or comedies it doesn't have to be comedies either uh, this one is not that good <laughs> a lot of Swedish classic comedies because uh, I haven't seen that many classic drama films or thrillers or whatever but a lot of the classic comedies they're not very good and this one is not either sort of about it's about this guy and he also made the movie uh, a comedy by and with Janne Loffe Karlsson is this guy uh, but it starts out with his brother this guy sort of this um, very sort of humble uh, nice um, person who he doesn't want any harm for anybody you know uh, you know what I mean uh, and he picks up his brother at at, at the prison or at, yeah where he has been for the past year or year year and a half or so but he says that he's been in America because he doesn't want to say that he's actually been in prison, um, and uh, he, I think he buys him a car. You know, this is a gift for you when you get out of prison. You know, I'll, I bought a car for you, dear brother. <laughs> you know, uh, but it turns out that the person he bought the car from is a very shady guy or very crooked guy, whatever you wanna say. And uh, the car is uh, horrible. I mean, if the car doesn't work, it breaks right away. So he wastes, he's wasted like 16,000 crowns on the car and he wants to get them back. And since his brother, he's been in the business before, you know, the con, conning business, he's a sort of a con man. Uh, he proposes that they get the money back um, by conning the guy who conned him, if you know what I mean. So uh, that's pretty much what the movie is. And then uh, things escalate because it's hard to stop when business is going well. So that's pretty much what it is. And uh, I kind of enjoyed it uh, for some, for, for, for you know, for for a while I enjoyed it, and after after a while it just got kind of boring, in lack of a better word. I don't know what to how to describe it, but I just didn't like it that much. Um, I don't know, not not great. <laughs> it has a pretty fun ending, but it really is nothing special. It's people conning or scamming or whatever each other, and there are better movies like this. Alright, then I, I guess I can show a bunch of... Um, I, I made a video of a box set, uh, I, can, I can link it in, in the descri description. Uh, a video of a box set containing a bunch of movies uh, based on the books by the, by the Swedish author Astrid Lindgren. Um, and uh, I don't think that's a very good video myself. I don't have many, very much to say about them, but I've watched a few of those or a bunch of those since I made the video, so I can show them, talk about them briefly. Um, so we got a whole bunch here. So these these are the ones that I've been watching so far. So we got Bröderna Leonjärt, Bröderna Leonjärt, the brother, the brothers Lionheart. I believe this is translated into several languages. Well, actually, a lot of a lot of her books are. Um, yeah, this is the movie, of course. But anyway, uh, yeah, this is like this is uh, about. Uh, I, I've seen all of these before, by the way, when I was a kid, and that's why I wanted to see them again. Um, but I haven't gotten to most of them yet. I haven't only gotten to some of them. Anyway, this one is about the, the two. These two brothers. Um, this guy is. Uh, uh, he's, he's, he's ill, he's sick, and he's gonna die pretty soon. Um, then a fire in their apartment, a fire sort of bursts out, a fire somehow it started. So his older brother takes him in his um, in his arms and he jumps out of the window with him and he dies. <laughs> but uh, And he goes to this uh, afterlife world and then he eventually dies too of his illness and he follows him. And, and th then it's about them in their in the afterlife, in the afterworld. Well, you know, um, and it's a battle between good and evil. I guess you could say that this represents good and this represents evil. And there's a big dragon involved, <laughs> for one thing. And it's um, it's about uh, bro bro brotherly love, or you know, love between brothers, and um, mainly that. That's the that that what that that is what inspired her, 
the, the author to to write the book. I, I actually did a did a presentation in school about the book, and so I know s certain things. But I don't, I don't need to go into go into everything. But a few things she based it on a few things, and mainly she, I mean she she saw this tombstone at a funeral where it said the, the inscription or the uh, uh, what's the word uh, epitaph maybe yeah I don't know. Uh, but there was some text on the tombstone which inspired her to make uh, this to write this book which then was made into a movie pretty early after in 1977 um, and yeah it's it's uh, yeah I won't talk too much about them actually these two they're still sealed because I have uh, a double pack of these or I have a DVD set with both of these so I believe I might have talked about it before uh, then we got. Uh, we, there are two mo two movies with Lotta, and this is one of them. I really did not enjoy this one that much. It's kind of like it's. She's a very young girl. I think she might be five years old or something. She's kind of a very stubborn girl. She does what she wants, you know. And uh, it's it's you know kids can relate in in some way or at least enjoy it. I I enjoyed this so much when I was a kid, as did I with most of these. But these, this now I didn't, I didn't really enjoy it that much because not much is ha not much is happening, <laughs> and I remember much of it too well. So it's not like, oh yeah, that's what happened. However, it it, it was fun to see this documentary where the actors talk about the production. Um, but there is one more of these, so I'll I'll watch that eventually. Then we got Carlson on the roof. Uh, this is Carl's Carlson. Carlson, Carlson, uh, and this too, he can fly, and uh, it's um, his friend, actually not imaginary friend, uh, although you, you can sort of interpret that the way you want, um, yeah, uh, but he lives in a, in, in a regular apartment in, I guess, Stockholm, and um, he, one day this, this guy is flying in, into his window, and he befriends him, uh, and uh, this is a very, it's, it's kind of odd because it's a child actor, but the voice actor is, is I mean, they've, they've removed his the, the child actor's voice and replaced it with an adult man's voice. It, but somehow it works. It sounds very creepy, but it, it works. Uh, so he has a dark, I mean, an, an adult voice. Uh, but he acts extremely, not precocious, but he acts like, well, I guess precocious, but very odd, extremely obnoxious and very sort of rude. Um, but um, yeah, and it's about their, the two of them, and this one I kind of enjoyed watching again, a little bit more than the other one. Then we get um, one. Actually, I thought I had two of these. Maybe I've talked about the other one. But I don't think I have. I'm gonna pick that one up as well over here. There are actually. Oh yeah. Okay. I th okay. Yeah. There are actually four of these. Uh, and I've seen two of them so far, and um, there, there, there's also a TV show with these characters, and then there are four movies, so a lot of um, material here. Basically, it's about these are th these movies. This is the second one I think from 1965. And this is the last one, the fourth one from 1967. Um, for example, you can see she is a, very, a lot more grown up here. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, I've I've seen this, the 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 TV series a long uh, I mean many times a long time ago, uh, as well as the movies, and I just got this special feeling when I watched them back in the day when I was ten or less less than ten I think, um, and it's about there's this archipelago in Stockholm, and uh, this is filmed there too, but they you know used another name. Um, the name of the archipelago or the, the island in the show is Salt Kråkan, which would translate to the Salty Crow, which I don't know where that comes from. It doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, and it's about the. Uh, this one is pretty much only just about the lives of the a bunch of kids. Uh, her, she's 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 so, she's so young in this though, so she doesn't really have the main part, but. Uh, the three kids here, the guy in orange and these two girls right here and this is like her uncle and this is other people involved but mainly about these kids uh, just sort of living their lives at this island not 
too much more el not that much else not much else to it uh, this one however has more of a plot it's about um, the four kids and she is more grown up now to the he, she was only a little baby there but she's more grown up and she has a bigger part and uh, many you know she has a bunch of lines now too she um, uh, or the four of them they are shipwreck shipwrecked I guess you could say on an island and their parents think they're at this other their parents they're 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 their way away somehow they they somehow think that the, the kids are safe at someone who's watching them but the person who's watching them couldn't watch them so she left a note like please go back to your parents because I can't I'm afraid I can't watch watch you right now but but they're both um you know because her her she she thinks she can tie tie boats to the dock very well but she can't so the boat boat floats away so they're stuck on this one island and on that island they meet well it takes a while before they meet them these guys they're smugglers they they smuggle smuggle is that, is that the word I think so if it's not then I'll just write the right word here uh, but they smuggle cigarettes and they're afraid that they will catch them and turn them in to the police so they sort of uh, hide away from them um, and this is their dog too uh, uh, and these guys are afraid of the dog <laughs> so yeah so this one has more of a plot so it's about uh, them trying to find a way out trying to find, fo find food and uh, them trying to hide out from them uh, and then eventually their paths cross and uh, yeah this one is um, yeah I enjoy both of these and I look forward to watching the other two as well then these two, uh, these are the, on the only two movies in, uh, about these children. Uh, I think there was a TV show from earlier, maybe the 60s, maybe the 70s. These are from 1986, both of them. Um, and um, they're pretty much about, you can see in the background here, you can see a couple houses. One here, one here, and one is back here. And in these houses, the these people live but especially the children, uh, well, this, the children don't live in the houses especially, that's not what I meant, but it, the story is especially about the children, and not much more, like like with this one, and like with Lotta, this one, and a whole bunch of others, it's just about these children and what they're up to, playing around, uh, the seasons come and go, you know, summer, fall, winter, spring, so these two cover one year, uh, all in all, and it was it was okay, <laughs> you know, it's it was um, not as not as exciting to watch them again as I had hoped. Um, but anyway, um, I guess uh, mainly children stuff this time then, but uh, just felt like making an, another another video like this. So uh, we'll see if I'll make another one. But uh, yeah, anyway. So, thank you for watching.